Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is The Hunger's Expansion High Stakes. The Hunger is made by Renegade and Ori Games. It plays two to five, two to six players, takes roughly about an hour or so to play. And in the game, The Hunger by Richard Garfield, you are basically a vampire. And your objective is to leave your castle during the night and travel around the board and attempt to get to the very end, gathering this rose, or not, and going back across the road before it becomes day and you get burned by the sun. If you can reach the end, you will win. If you get to a certain spot on the board without getting to the end, you can survive. And in certain portions of the board, you might just die and lose all the points that you've gathered. So it's a bit of a push your luck. You're going to be deck building to a certain extent, trying to hunt humans and gather more vampires. And you're also going to be trying to equip your deck with the best possible cards to give you the most points. Throughout the game, there's going to be different sorts of things that will give you additional, like, bonuses and whatnot, or if you're able to kill a certain number of humans, or a certain type of human, or have a certain number of vampire cards, you can score more points on this track here. So it's a little bit of all of that. I've covered the hunger before, but what I haven't covered is the expansion, which is what I'm going to get to in this video. I'll explain what kind of additional setup is required, how you're going to be playing it, and of course, my review. Let's get into the high stakes. So in general with my videos, whenever I cover a game, I show you how to play it, and and how to set it up, but because this is an expansion and you can watch the other video down in the description, I'll just explain what you're going to be doing with the expansion. The expansion is going to provide a unique couple things. The first thing is you're going to get a new deck of cards. You're also going to be getting a new set of these fight, or I should say these are wound cards. Wound cards are a separate deck and set aside, and at the very end of the deck is going to be a you are injured card, meaning you will take more damage whenever you run out of wound cards that can be added to your graveyard. Speaking of wound cards in the new deck, how are you going to associate that? Well, there's going to be new threats that are going to pop out throughout the game. Vampires, other vampires, and werewolves are going to pop up in certain portions of where you're going to be purchasing slash hunting the humans and gathering new vampires. And whenever you want to hunt or purchase a new vampire slash human, you are going to have to deal with the threat that is adjacent to that specific portion on the grid. Meaning you will take that threat and put it into your player area and you will have to fight it. Additionally, of course, threats are going to require a certain type of threat based on an event deck, which I'll explain in a second here, and these will be set aside down below along with the threats. Your new deck is just going to be added uh, to your player board that you're going to start with in the game, and the wound deck will place, be placed uh, somewhere within reach. The old deck of cards you will not need. The game is also going to come with a bunch of new objectives. It's going to come with a bunch of basic cards. They're going to go into the main deck of cards here, and you're also going to be getting event decks. Event decks are going to be based on the 15 turn summary. You'll be gathering a certain number of the basic events, which during play, at the beginning of every round, you'll draw one of these and participate in whatever it has to say. Additionally, there is a game event, an event that takes place throughout the entire game. There are multitudes of these. You'll just choose one of them every game, and that will change the game. And finally, at the very bottom of the event stack for the 15th turn, because normally in the game you're just going to be associating this little moon with turns and going down to 15, and at the end of the 15th turn you'll see if you burn up or how many points you get. That's still the case, but you don't need it because you can just simply use these cards, which will associate what you need to do in the game and anything that is going to pop up. But basically, that's pretty much it. Everything else is laid out exactly the same as far as the setup for the board goes, as far as your victory points and your vampires. There's a few unique game mechanics, which we'll talk about now, in addition to anything else you need to know about how to play the game The Hunger with the high stakes expansion, and then we'll get into what I think. Gameplay plays just like The Hunger. You're going to be drawing three cards from your deck. Then you're going to be playing these three cards in your playing area. And then based on where you are on the board, we'll determine who's going to go first. And you'll be utilizing your cards. Cards are going to have speed, uh, which you can use to either hunt monsters uh, on these little tracks here based on the cost associated at the top of each of the columns here. And it's also going to be used for movement. So if I have five speed, I can make my character move three and pick something that costs two. Or I can make it move two and pick something that costs three. Or I can just simply spend all of my movement on the board here. Landing on a space, something unique will happen. If you want to know more, check out my other review. Additionally though, some of your cards in your deck are going to have a fight or damage value. Cards like these, they'll have a little damage value on the side here. 
This will indicate how much damage you can deal to any threats that you have in front of you. Additionally, threat can be used uh, to hunt, but not to move. So if I have three speed and one hunt, I can use all three of the speed to hunt. In addition, I can use that bonus um, attack value to hunt as well. Or I can move three spaces and use my attack value to hunt for one. So that can be very useful in certain circumstances. Another thing that's really unique about this game too is instead of the normal push mechanic where when you walk onto a vampire space, you're able to push them one forward or one back. Now instead, you can fight them. You will use any fights that you have in front of you to make them take damage, but not in the damage sense of the game where you're going to be taking injuries. Damage for player versus player will simply remove cards from their deck into their discard pile and you will once again get to push them, which is very useful. Otherwise, if you don't fight them, you just stay on top like you normally would. Uh, and that's mainly how these fights work. Now I said before too, when a vampire or werewolf is uh, brought to your field because you went and gathered something from a row that they were in. So for instance, if I had a vampire or werewolf over here, I would move this over here and it would be next to me. It attacks whenever it comes into play and every time you reshuffle your deck, which is why attacking players is useful. Um, and the only way to defeat it is by defeating its HP on the bottom uh, left-hand side. So this has four health, it gives you three points or more, and of course it does two damage to you whenever your deck is shuffled or whenever it comes into play on your side of the field. And it will stay on your side of the field until it is defeated. Try not to get more than one of these at a time. At the beginning of every round two, uh, instead of just beginning the turn by the player who is the uh, closest to the castle, you're going to draw an event card. You will read that event card and you will do what it says. This is kind of a way to trigger what happens at the beginning of a round. And when all of these are done and you're on the final one, that will actually trigger the end of the game. Along with, of course, the game event, which will happen throughout the game. And whenever you do something that uh, affects this card, you're simply going to read it and do as it says. So, uh, you'll continually go throughout the game and do basically everything else you would normally do, hopefully gathering a rose in which there comes with a new rose in the game that you can go ahead and gather. And uh, of course, gathering the different creatures. And there's more creatures now that are gonna be added to the deck that will involve fighting value. You can play the novice version of the game or the regular version of the game, but that's basically how it works. I guess the one thing I didn't explain is how do monsters spawn? Well, when that event card gets drawn, the player who drew it is going to look at the very bottom of that card, associate the colored symbol on the bottom with one of these threat card symbols, and then draw a random card from the top of the threat deck and attach it to a row with that card. You can never have more than one threat in one row, and whenever you run out of the colors associated with the events, you're not gonna be drawing any more monsters as well. But that is pretty much the expansion of the game and how it functions. Like I said, for a more detailed review of how the game is going to play in the base version, go ahead and check down below. But let's get into what I think of the game the Hunger High Stakes expansion. So with the Hunger High Stakes, there's not only more of the same, which is what most expansions will give you, more different types of objectives that you can solve, additional cards that change the way the game is played, but it also comes with new mechanics. The fighting mechanic, the attacking mechanic, being able to attack other vampires and whittle their deck down to make threats in their field do damage to them. Fighting threats that have moved onto your field because events have put them onto the different columns slash rows, and then getting the bonuses. Werewolves, when you attack them, they may have eaten humans from the board. As humans move into their domain, they can eat them and that will score you bonus points in addition to what they're worth. And vampires, when you fight them, are going to give you a unique benefit. Like for instance, this one is going to let you take two bonus tokens from the reserve and keep one and exile the other. And so you're fighting these guys, keeping them on your field when it calls for it. Sometimes it's okay to keep, keep one or two of these guys in play. And sometimes it's okay to take a bunch of wounds. But remember, at the end of the game, based on the wounds that you have in your deck, you're gonna lose points. So there's a lot of mitigating factors that you need to consider when taking wounds, reshuffling your deck, and how long you want to leave your threat out on the field. And then not only that, but you have a new deck of cards. This new deck of cards is going to associate with what you should or shouldn't do in the game. It's gonna give you a lot more value and of course a lot more choice than the base set of six cards you start the game with. This is a deck builder still. You do feel like you're building your deck and some cards, while beneficial, are going to hurt you and some cards that are great are going to not give you value at the end of the game, such as victory points, because eating humans is very important. Digesting them slash removing them from play and keeping them underneath your player board is still a vital necessity and choosing your path is also vitally important as well. Now, a lot of these cards that have been added do change that flow of gameplay and how you want to associate your deck with what you're trying to do. Are you somebody trying to take 
lots of wounds and heal them to gain victory points? Are you somebody avoiding the threats altogether? Or is there some type of mix between the two? Are you trying to get to the very end of the board and gather one of the roses and bring it back to score you both loads, boatloads of points? Or do you just want to go far enough to get to what you need and go back to get to the middle of the board to score the highest amount of victory points you can by winning the race first? Also being aware of when the sun comes up by the end of the game, if you don't make it back to one of the spaces that has negative points or of course the castle in and of itself, then you're going to lose the game. So there's a lot of mitigating factors when it comes to that. This expansion is great. Utilizing the tokens to do damage to the monster, because they give you a bunch of these little heart tokens associated with doing damage. You don't need to kill them all outright. You can whittle them down slowly. And choosing more options is always beneficial. Uh, the artwork is still phenomenal. The quality is great. Setup is very easy. And once you've done this once or twice, you'll understand how it works. This plays similar to the setup of Clank. It has probably the same complexity as well as the game Clank. And it has the still same light deck builder. What's unique is the fighting mechanics, how you gather your cards, and of course the push your luck mechanism involved in the entire game as opposed to turn by turn, trying to determine how good your deck is uh, by the midway point and whether or not you can make it back to the castle. A few funky things. This game now with a bunch of more moving parts and whatnot is going to associate having to use a lot, do a lot more things to be in the game. You're going to need to draw one of these cards, read this aloud, check to whenever the game event is going to take place. You're going to watch your objectives and of course your deck, how many wounds you've got. Do you have any werewolves or vampires that you have to fight as threats on your board? And so there becomes a lot more mechanical thinking now than the previous one. So when I want a lighter play, I don't want to have to think about too many things. I'd rather play the base game, but when I want some a little bit more in depth, a lot more choice, and a lot of additional added mechanics that make the game interesting, then of course the high stakes expansion is going to come into play. I think uh, for a variety of people uh, in my playgroup that played this game, this was a success. People really enjoyed the game. Some people found it a bit clunky. And of course, because the game has got more stuff in it, the game is going to take longer. So this expansion does add, in my opinion, an additional 30, 30 to 35 minutes of gameplay to the base game because there's just a bunch of extra little things that you need to do and think about during your turn and how you utilize an extra source of resource. An extra source of resource being the attack. This is not something that you have to associate with what you need to use it for throughout the game on your turn. All this little complexities of comboing cards and drawing extra cards and adding cards to your deck to then digest them is going to be there as well. Adding the new unique mechanics of the companions is going to be great. Being able to sacrifice them or gain victory points with them is still fun and added to the game and all the beginning novice selections is still there as well. Still, overall, The Hunger is an excellent game and the high stakes expansion just brings more fun to the equation as well as unique new mechanics, provided your playgroup is ready for it and you don't mind a longer play session. But overall, a solid expansion and one I strongly recommend if you enjoy the game The Hunger. Thank you guys for checking out another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the games The Hunger's Expansion, The High Stakes. I personally really enjoyed this game. I just gotta make sure not to get dirty wounds. <laughs> yeah, you can also go ahead and check out our website on filteredgamer.com. There's blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And if you'd like, we have a live stream every single Wednesday, which is going to be on Whatnot, where we give away and sell games. Our live stream for playing board games is on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on all three platforms, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. And of course, if you'd like, just on this channel, we stream games, review games every month. Monday through Friday, just like this one here. You can see more of our games. Some of them are going to be more indie Kickstarter related games, and some of them are going to be more of a production copy sample from a larger company. But either way, I think you'll have a good time and distinguish what games work best for you. Checking out our live streams is definitely going to help as well to make sure that you know what game you want to play based on how you think everybody's playing, and as, is your group or your game group going to feel the same way? Thank you, that's it. Go ahead and subscribe, like, and comment, and hit that bell notification button. And as always, I look forward to going out and gathering humans in the hunger with you next time.